from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We're back here on the ground for coverage of Consensus 2018, part of Blockchain Week New York. And we've got uh, some amazing action going on here. We've got Omar Bam, who's uh, with crypto, CRYP0. We also got a great podcast. Great to see you. Crypto News, you're doing a lot of great social. Love the hat, love the thank, swag. Thank you so Looking much, good. thank you so much. Yeah, this is a swag, actually, a, 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 a follower of mine actually sent me. So I get these random boxes of just shirts, but I love them because my entire closet is crypto shirts and now Goodwill because I donate all these crypto shirts. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> yeah, great thanks. to have you on. You're a celebrity, uh, media celebrity, but you're really an example of a rising uh, new kind of stakeholder in the ecosystem and the community. You're producing content, you're producing with the community, it's a co-development model, you're building a network. Yeah. It's, Not it's, audience, they're already there, but you got a network. Yeah, it's, it's that thing where you want to find that niche, you know, yeah. and it's just, we've yeah. been blessed, some of us, to find this space pretty early on, and and develop that presence before others perhaps could. It's just a blessing. So what's your take on all this place? I got to ask you, what's your thoughts? Massive crowd, what's the analysis? You know, I was here last year and uh, I, we were expecting, uh, uh, I think it was 2,750 last year, this year 4,000, turns out to be 8,000 people. And uh, a big trend, trending Twitter post today was, do you think that you're getting work done? This is by Amin Gunseer. He's one of the big blockchain, uh, he looks at the code very deeply in different blockchains. And so he said, do you feel like you're getting work done with that many people or do you feel like you're not? And more people were actually getting work done. I think it was like 62% to 38% of the vote. So <laughs> even with the amount of people here, people are close, tight, and still getting work, um, you know. Well, networking. one of the things, and this brings up a good point, I mean, when you're face-to-face -face at a physical event, you have engagement at a whole nother level. It's not digital, not digital face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Um, I was down in the cafeteria for the little cafe. It's supposed to be public, open for when you buy your lunch. Yeah. It was like a conference room. I couldn't sit down. People having meetings. There is so much business being done, relationships being built. So this community really is kind of getting work done. Yeah. And a lot of it's relationship-based. Sure. Yes, absolutely. And you know, it's a, it's a lot of it to do with old relationships blossoming into new relationships. It's that I trust somebody who I already trust. So a lot of these guys have been coming to conferences together for years yeah. and you get introduced to somebody and then it, it just works that way. And that's, that's kind of a beautiful, yeah. it's like a mesh network. It's not just coming here and trying to, you know, like necessarily shill. It's like, oh, here's my friend who I trust. Yeah. We went to school together and naturally, automatically, maybe it's a human thing. We just so connect to that person a little bit Talk easier. Talk about the work you're doing. You got a YouTube channel, you got a podcast, you got to do some Facebook. Yeah. What's the format of the show? What's your style? What are you looking for? What kind of content are you producing? Obviously, it's very engaging, it's very popular. Popular. Yeah. What's your style? Well, originally my style was a belief that the economy was going to collapse. So I, I was uh, a big investor in stocks. I was trading uh, and I was trying to save my 401k. Uh, believe it or not, this was a, a while back. And I was thinking, how, how do I grow my capital and preserve it? I was worried uh, that we were going to have another collapse. Like 2008 was the beginning of it. So I thought, uh, about the future, the singularity, and this one point where we look, we look at Moore's law where computing prices get cut in half for chips every year and a half was what the original roadmap, prices cut in half, and basically how do we connect that old world collapsing, perhaps, <laughs> into this new infrastructure, and cryptocurrency came at that point, uh, where I had already had some Bitcoin, and then Ethereum was coming out, and I realized Ethereum could very well provide that base protocol for the next internet of things, so. And the developer community uptake has been phenomenal with Ethereum. Yeah, it's so, incredible, yeah. So let's do a little show right now. Omar, what's going on? How's it going? <laughs> What's the content like? What's the coolest thing you're seeing here? Share some stories from the show. What have you seen? Let me see. Uh, I, I did interviews with some huge people, so it's so cool just to run into like the creator of Litecoins right there, giving out stickers for his crypto magical friends, creator of Monero, talking about how he lost all his crypto in a boating accident to me yesterday, <laughs> uh, talking to some big trader dudes, hearing about uh, some stuff I can't even talk about, like because I promised that we did a verbal NDA and I honor those. Um, but I don't know. It's it's. Everywhere you look, there's something to learn. And it's got everything into it. I mean, I love this wave, right? Because one, technically, it's some magical shit happening, sure. and it's happening big time. Starting out, and it's growing fast. Business side, radical disruption to business models. Community has been open source, kind of an extension to open source communities. So, you, and then you got a glam factor, money. Mm. Right? So, I mean, money. I mean, I, what, you, is, what you, is it missing? You know, I had a friend uh, actually tell me that he got kidnapped. He got kidnapped, tied up, uh, and held at gunpoint. 
for three hours for all his crypto. So we lost all his crypto. So mostly the people who are like way up there don't do all that flaunting and, and, and showy stuff. You look at the big developers aren't rolling up in the Lambos and Ferraris. Generally, you want to be pretty uh, humble and modest about what your, your earnings are. So I think it's a, maybe it's a sign of like that Floyd May Mayweather phenomenon. Let me show it off. Yeah, let's, let's yeah. flaunt it. But mostly like I think it's that, you know, when you, when you work for somebody, you wear a suit. When you work for yourself, no offense. <laughs> yeah. I think you look great. You got the jeans I'm on. I'm not wearing a tie. Exactly. So. And then when you work for yourself, you can show up in pajamas. Yeah. So. Well, I got I, I to gotta agree with you that I love the mojo. And I think one of the things that's notable in this industry is the pioneers, the guys who are making the money on the front end, they're developers too. Mm -hmm. They're not just you know guys rolling the, the financial uh, Wall Street kind of thing. They're making money and they're paying it forward, right? There's a there's a huge pay it forward culture yes, here. Yes, absolutely. And I think that is I think the differentiator that no one sees is that that ethos is self governing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there'll be a mainstream adoption pretty quickly, mm -hmm. but still right now it's tight knit. It's mm -hmm. very cool and it's a pay it forward culture. This is mainstream to me, man. Two years seeing this space just blossom. Um, well, we're getting there. I think it's the, the early adopter phase, maybe yeah. a little bit of early adopter, early majority. In the United States, it depends where you are in the world. In LA, everyone has at least heard of Bitcoin or has some yeah. Bitcoin where I live. Um, it wasn't the case before when I was living in Miami. And well, Omar, like, big fan of your work. We showed you the Clipper tool. Uh, We're going to get that to you. I love what you're doing. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing it to me. I have to have yeah. you on my own show. Yeah, what's the share. URL? Give a plug. What's the URLs? YouTube channel? coordinates, how do people get in touch with you? You can go to youtube.com slash CRYPT0. So it's basically crypto, but without a zero. You can go to Twitter, so you can follow without me. Without a no. At, yeah? It's crypto without a no or with an O? Uh, not the letter O, just the letter, uh, the number zero. Number zero, okay. So CRYPT0, then you go to uh, Crypto's News, same way I'm always crypto with a zero at the end instead of a, a letter. So Crypto's News, Instagram, Twitter, we're on Steemit, crypto, everywhere. Yeah. Well, let's do some co-development together. You're now a Cube alumni. Yeah. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you so much for having me. We just we just met, but yeah. I'm really yeah. excited to have met. Love some, love some the new man. producers. We love co-co-developing. We do it out in the open. We're in the open right now. We're on the floor here at Consensus 2018, bringing you all the coverage. Going to do 10 more interviews tomorrow. I did eight interviews last night. We interview anything that moves. That's high quality. Omar, thanks for coming on. It's the Cube. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. Thanks, John. Live from the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and the Information Quality Symposium. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman.